Schwerer Gustav was one of the biggest guns to be owned by Hitler. It was a formidable wartime weapon that came with several distinct traits as prevalent in the cannons and other artillery of World War II. While it was extensively used during World War II, this weapon was ideated and created much before the menacing war. After its creation, it served as precursory artillery for invading France. At the time, it was designed to support the German army as they bravely defended their troops across the Maginot Line. However, despite being meticulously created, the weapon's impact on the ongoing wars was much smaller when compared with the entire picture. Despite being one of the most impressive ammunitions of the Second World War, it witnessed a fairly dishonorable fate. In this video, we will discuss more on this weapon including its features, conception, history, deployment, and applications among others. Features One of the defining aspects of this gun was its impressive caliber of 31 inches. Thanks to this exceptional trait, the device could effectively file projectiles weighing 10 tons or more at a distance of 30 miles. Its power, and stature, were, therefore, imposing, to say the least. The barrels of this gun were equally impressive. Their length was 100 feet on average which again was greater than any average gun. The same could be said about the gun body which was the largest to be found. Owing to this lofty stature, the gun resembled a small building. It stood stall with four stories that extend across 150 feet and its average weight was 1,300 tons. For the uninitiated, the average weight of a space shuttle is 2,000 tons. So this tank was not tiny in the least. Every single gun shell was conceived to destroy everything inside and their height was just as tall as two men with more than average height. Each shell also boasted an impressive weight of 20,000 pounds. Because of this extreme weight, multiple men had to be deployed to load the barrels. To ensure mobility, the body also featured two sets of wheels that sat parallel. This enabled the gun to move across every type of track. Conception and History The Schwerer weapon was conceived in early 1935. This was immediately after the publication of the Wehrmacht study that discussed and identified the type of ammunition required to support German troops in invading France. When the Second World War finally commenced, Hitler was keen to invade parts of Western Europe. At its very essence, he wanted to invade France. After carefully examining the lessons learned from the preceding Great War, the troops in France established an impenetrable fortification to deter the Germans. Alternatively known as the Maginot Line, this was one of the strongest barriers crafted from steel and concrete. The French troops spent a significant time studying defensive tactics following their previous string of defeats. Because of that, they leveraged two virtually impenetrable, further strengthening the border. However, despite putting immense thought into defensive prowess, the French troops failed to defend themselves even with the lofty Maginot line. One of its biggest flaws was its lack of modern war proofing that led to its collapse during the Blitzkrieg assault that the Germans launched. The German army had honed the strategy much earlier during the Spanish War and it also served to be immensely powerful and sufficing across the several wartime stages. Deployment Despite boasting a powerful troop against the French army, the requested Schwerer Gustav model couldn't be deployed at the beginning of the invasion of France. That was because the model wasn't even complete by that time. However, the Germans fought valiantly even without the weapon, and with Hitler's strategic planning, they could deploy far higher numbers of German troops that effectively outnumbered and outshined the French army. Following this event, the French army surrendered immediately. However, despite the surrendering Hitler wanted to utilize the weapon. He finally got his coveted opportunity during the siege of Sevastopol. At this time, the 4,000 German troops took five weeks to position the ammunition following which it was finally ready. Over the next five days between 5th to 17th June, the iconic gun was leveraged to fire 48 straight rounds. In the grand scheme of things, this was the same as 30,000 lofty ammunition tons. The gun barrel successfully fired 250 rounds at the testing phase. However, it soon wore out just like the troops. Firing the gun involved at least 500 men but they were exhausted after fully loading the massive gun shells to the device. Because of this reason, the gun was discontinued for a while. The crooks were tasked with relining the barrel, as the troops assigned a spare to the original machine. This was performed as a preparatory measure for the imminent Leningrad attack. When the attack was ultimately cancelled, Hitler asked to move the gun to some tracks around Leningrad. Discontinuation Even though this was one of the most powerful guns to be ever conceptualized, the Germans soon understood the fallibility of the device. First, it required scores of men to fire a single round. It wasn't the best decision to allocate so many troops just to complete a single task. Another major issue was the gun's mobility. Because of its size, it was extremely difficult to move and was far from discreet when it came to aerial attacks. 
Bottom line. Despite being one of the biggest guns to be ever created, Schwerer Gustav was ultimately discontinued owing to the skyrocketing maintenance costs. These shells of these guns were extremely expensive, and the price couldn't be justified when Germans already had several better, more maneuverable, and discreet tanks. Finally, the German army decided to entirely retire this iconic ammunition. During this time, however, they also wanted to ensure that the gun was destroyed with no visible trace so that none of the enemy troops could access it again. To achieve this goal, they removed the different parts of this massive gun. The current and accurate whereabouts of these dismantled gun parts are still unknown to the greater public. Hope you enjoyed this video and I see you on the next one. Do not forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more future videos.